Now, we've talked about how substitution stabilizes carbocations and substitution stabilizes radicals. I don't remember whether we've talked about the effect of substitution on alkenes. I don't remember if we've talked about that or not. Do you know, is substitution good or bad for alkenes? Maybe we haven't talked about that. Well, it turns out that alkenes are the same as carbocations and radicals. Okay. Well, in that case, does substitution stabilize or destabilize alkenes? Stabilize. That's right. So now we can put our general theory of substitution. Substitution stabilizes radicals, carbocations, and alkenes. It's important to know that substitution stabilizes radicals, carbocations, and alkenes. Substitution with carbon chains. Substitution with carbon chains stabilizes carbocations, radicals, and alkenes. Mm -hmm. We already know why it stabilizes carbocations and radicals. Carbocations and radicals are electron deficient. And carbon chains are slightly electron donating. And I think maybe we won't spend the time to explain why it stabilizes alkenes. Uh, maybe we'll just memorize that. It's not a very complicated explanation, but to save time, maybe we'll just memorize that substitution also stabilizes alkenes. Okay. So um, we're just going to say that substitution stabilizes alkenes. All right, so which of these, in that, in that respect, which of these is the happier, more stable product? The one for product. Yeah, this would tend to be more stable. But sadly, that gives us an opposite prediction to what we had before. Earlier, we had an argument in favor of 1, 2. 1, 2 should be faster because it involves the more stabilized resonance structure. Mm -hmm. But the 1, 4 addition should give you the more stable product. One two addition is faster because it involves using the more stabilized resonance structure. But 1, 4 addition gives the more stable product because it gives the more substituted product. Well, we have two uh, opposite considerations here. So which of these is going to determine which product we're going to get? Well, unfortunately, it just depends on the conditions. In some conditions, the 1, 2 addition will prevail. And in some conditions, the 1, 4 addition is going to prevail. All right. Another way of putting this is the 1, 2 addition is favored kinetically mm -hmm. because kinetics is about how fast a reaction is going. 1, 2 addition is favored kinetically, but 1, 4 addition is favored thermodynamically. Thermodynamics is related to how stable your products are, but kinetics is related to how fast the reaction is going. Well, maybe to save time, we won't get into too many details here. We'll simply say So we've said that 1, 2 addition is kinetically favored. And 1, 4 addition is thermodynamically favored. Kinetics means how fast it's going. Thermodynamics is related to how stable the product is. So if the reaction is under kinetic control, you'd want to do the 1, 2 addition. But if it's under thermodynamic control, you'd want to do the 1, 4 addition. Well, let's say that we're at very high temperature. Let's try to give a, a short abbreviated explanation for the effect of temperature here. If we're at high temperature, 
would you expect that the reactions would be going fast or slow? Does high temperature tend to give us a high rate of reaction or a slow rate of reaction? In fact, if the temperature is very high, then both reactions will be going very quickly. Now remember, what's the advantage of 1-2 addition? The advantage is that it's faster. However, if both reactions are already going very quickly, it doesn't do, it, it doesn't do any good for this to be faster because they're both going so fast in the sense that there's no difference between them, if I'm, if I'm explaining that. Uh, well, I don't know how well I'm explaining that. But if the temperature, so if the temperature is low, then um, one of the reactions, then there, you know, there can be a big difference, uh, then we need something to get one of the reactions to go faster. If we're at a low temperature, at a low temperature, both reactions would tend to be pretty slow. But the fact that this 1, 2 is kinetically favored will give it a big edge, because it has that extra tendency to go faster. On the other hand, if the temperature is high, both reactions are already going very fast because of the high temperature. And so it doesn't really matter very much that this has an extra edge from being kinetically favored. Now what matters is which is giving us the more stable product. I don't know how well I explained that. But anyway, at a high temperature, since the reactions are already very fast, it doesn't really matter that this has any extra edge from the fact that it's 1-2 addition. So in this case, we would tend to have thermodynamic control. Well, I tried to explain why that was, but in any case, you can just have in your notes, a high temperature favors the thermodynamically favored product, mm -hmm. and a low temperature favors the kinetically favored product. Your instructor also gave an explanation for this. In terms of a reaction coordinate diagram. But he didn't assign you any problems about that. So maybe to save time, we won't go through all the details there. We'll just memorize this idea. I think, though, this idea is likely to be tested. Let's try 2014. We'll just do part A. Do you have this in your notes? Yes. So the question is, what would be the thermodynamic product from this reaction, and what would be the kinetic product? I'm not too quite sure how to go about this reaction without the... Uh, oh, they're, uh, they actually made this a little different because they put in Br2, yeah, but, uh, not the HBr. Okay. Uh, BR2, let's say that we're using HBR. Let's draw the thermodynamic and kinetic products from this. 